the Travel Women. And I'm Sarah with Sarah Funky. And we're breaking it down how to find the best places to eat near you. Yes, and we're gonna cover three tips that will guarantee the place you choose will be amazing no matter where you are in the world. And the red flags to avoid. If you see these, don't go there. Do not. Mm -mm. Bad idea. So let's <laughs> dive in. Let's do it. Uh, so the number one tip I think is to definitely ask a local. Yes, a hundred percent. Locals, there's a reason that you know they're from there, they've been to many of the restaurants, they know it better than anyone, better than any reviews online. Yes, you can spot them because they're, you know, they don't have a map, they don't have a lot of bags, they're walking and they have a direction, they know where they're going. Uh, you know, you can see them maybe by themselves, not with a big group. They generally speak the language of the country, that's yes. a good indicator. <laughs> uh, they dress, you know, the way that the locals dress, that obviously is very different depending on where you are. Yes. Um, a great way uh, that we were talking about earlier was yeah. doing it in a taxi. So. You ask your taxi driver, they generally drop people off all over the city and they can have really good suggestions on where to eat because they're constantly dropping people off at all these different places. It's so true. When I was in Chicago, I was looking for the best deep yeah. dish and I asked every single taxi driver, car share driver, I, I kept asking, where's the best deep dish? Yeah. And each one had such different opinions and they were so passionate about this <laughs> is the best one. So it's just like a fun conversation yeah. anyways to find the best ones when you ask the local. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do it. I agree. So what do you do if you don't know any locals though? You just gotta get up the courage and like ask, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I mean, for me, the my favorite way to meet locals when I'm traveling is through couch surfing. That's a great tip. Yeah, couch surfing hangouts. It's, it's a new part of the app where you, it's kind of like Tinder, but not dating. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you see all the people that are available that are locals that are willing to meet people that are travelers. Yeah. And I've had amazing experiences and amazing restaurant suggestions just from that. That's awesome. I love that idea. And, and you can even ask if you're staying somewhere at a hotel, you can ask the concierge. But keep in mind, if you're staying at a very nice luxury hotel, they're likely to recommend a very expensive restaurant. Um, or they might even have partners, which yeah. is a good point. So, Take, take it with a grain of salt and, and keep in mind that, you know, you can honestly keep asking people. I think yeah. that's the best thing is yeah. if someone says an option that doesn't seem to jive with what you're looking for, keep asking more locals until you find the right spot. Or tour guides, tour really guides, anyone that yeah. you encounter on your trip that's from that place, exactly. you know, they'll be able to give you good suggestions. I agree. Okay, number two? Number two. Okay, so number two is apps. Yes. We know and use them. We mm -hmm. have a couple that we recommend for the U.S. and outside. Yeah. Um, so I love to use Yelp, which yes. is great for New York and great for the U.S. Yes. And it shows you everything with the reviews, and I really base it based on reviews. About four four stars and up. Yeah. Is guaranteed Nothing lower good. than four stars. Not worth also it. Foursquare is popular in the U.S. Yes, absolutely. If you're traveling worldwide, Google reviews. Also, Google reviews is popular in the U.S. Yeah. But you can't really go wrong with Google reviews. Those are everywhere they use those. Um, I try to go for definitely always four stars or above. But if yes. I can, four point five stars. I agree. Yes. I, in, yeah. I agree. Yes. And then TripAdvisor as well. But the thing about TripAdvisor that you have to keep in mind is that a lot of the time it's tourists that use that, so you're going to have that perspective. So just keep that in mind when you're using TripAdvisor. They do generally have good suggestions no matter what, but it is sometimes a more touristy way. <laughs> yes. And when you're looking at reviews, don't forget to look at how many reviews there are. If there's yeah. thousands of reviews and they're all good, that's a great sign. If there's a 5.0 rating and there's only one review or two reviews, that does it's, not yeah. seem right. right. Something's a little bit fishy about it yeah. and it's, there's not enough information, I think, yeah. to say that that's a great restaurant. So, uh, you know, continue with caution. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, because it could be that they're new and they yes. don't have reviews yet. Yes. Or it could be because they started a new account because they had such terrible reviews <laughs> that now they want to start it and they got their friends to rate the... Honestly, it's You never really know what you're getting into. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so, any other apps? There's Zomato is another one. There's never a lot that of, one. That used to be Urban Spoon. There's so oh, many apps. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, um, when you're traveling internationally, when you have these local friends, ask them what apps they use. When I was in Thailand, I did this, and I got the best suggestions that you couldn't find on Google reviews 
or on TripAdvisor because the locals don't put their reviews there. So you got the real honest opinion. The same with um, when I was traveling in South Korea, I asked the locals what they used and that's how I really use it. If you can get what the locals use, the app they use, that's the, going to be the best recommendations when I'm finding where the best place to eat is. Awesome. That's such a great tip. And number three, walk around and just explore. That is sometimes the best way to find the best places near you yeah. because you'll see the biggest sign for me is when a place is crowded and there's mm -hmm. almost a line, not too long of a line, but you see that people are really excited to be going into a certain place. There's yep. people constantly walking in. Absolutely. Go explore. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's such a good indicator. Another one for me is just follow your nose. Like if you yes. smell something amazing, just follow that. Yes. I found probably the best Indian restaurant I've ever been to in guess what country? Czech Republic. What? So random. And the <laughs> way I found it was because I literally followed my nose down to this. It was kind of sketchy, but then when I got inside, it was so packed. Yeah. And I later found out that is like the local spot. I love it. Yeah. Oh it, it was like down this like basement stairs and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I might die in here. And then it opened up and it, it was the biggest restaurant, but it was underground hidden. I feel so like no hidden. Tours. Yeah. Sometimes they are kind of hidden. So that's yeah. when you want like the apps to sort of help yes. you. And your nose. And your nose. And your nose. Yeah. 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 Or l like lines. Yeah. So when you see a line and it's a shorter line or a group of people, that's yeah. a good sign. But let's talk about the red flags here because there are some, oh, yeah. some things like we talked about, you know, small crowds is a good thing, but if you walk into a restaurant and there's no one there, it's Especially empty. during eating hours, yes. bad sign. Walk out immediately. <laughs> the waiter comes with a menu like, ooh, come hang out. Like, no, just, just keep walking, just, oh, sorry, I have to go somewhere. Yeah, also, if you are <laughs> traveling abroad, particularly, you'll see this in uh, Europe a lot, and they hand you a menu that's like this thick because oh. it's translated into like, 20 different languages that's generally a tourist trap avoid it don't do it yeah. yeah i think when when things are in i think that's such a good point every single language and yeah. it's just they just know that they're waiting for the tourists yeah they're not focusing on making the food the best that it can no be. and there's probably you're paying too much for what you're getting that's true yeah so true and whenever you see big photos of the food outside the restaurant or on the menu that's another sign yeah except in uh like some asian countries that's how their menus are that's true it's very strange i've seen that in asian which is countries. helpful because i don't i don't speak the language <laughs> <laughs> nor can i read the yeah. Even though so the pictures help me, but yeah. if you go to Europe or like yes. United States and you see pictures, it's a I bad agree. sign. When you see photos in Europe or the U.S., that yeah. is definitely a bad sign. Yes. Not worth bad it. Sign. Not the best place to eat near you. So I feel like we've covered I think, everything. I think we're Those good. Those are the main. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's it. I think we're good. I hope that this helps you find the best places near you in New York or wherever you are. Yeah, wherever. And don't forget to subscribe to our channels, Jennifer O'Brien on YouTube and Sarah Funky on YouTube. As always, say yes to new adventures and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yay!